up you guys happy new year today i am launching a new series of videos in addition to other stuff that i'll be doing on my channel it's going to be a series about current events and controversies in the world of sexuality. I've wanted to make this series forever, but had to focus on other projects. And now I'm finally in a place where I have more time, but now YouTube is systematically demonetizing my channel, which makes things a little bit difficult. So this year, just like every other YouTuber, I'm hopping on the Patreon train and I'm going to be you know, cultivating a tighter knit, more intimate community on Patreon. Thanks for all the love and support, babes. It means the world to me. I hope you have a great year and you enjoy the new series. Mwah. Last August, a viral video on Facebook caught my eye. It was about Nemes Quinn Melon Con Golden. I definitely butchered that name, sorry. AKA Lactatia. He's a nine year old drag queen from Montreal. Since then, I have seen all kinds of, you know, little things happening, little kid drag queens popping up on social media, which isn't that surprising to me. Drag is more visible than it's ever been. It's all over the internet, and of course, RuPaul's Drag Race. And although a lot of people seem to find Lactatia's story inspiring, there are some people who just aren't that stoked about it. The comment section on this video has thousands of accusations of child abuse of sexualizing the kid. The criticism intensified again a few days ago when Lactatia was crowned the cover girl of an erotic clothing company called The House of Man. Now, Lactatia isn't wearing bondage gear in the picture. He's wearing a sparkly onesie, but this definitely didn't do much to like chill things out. In today's inauguratory episode of SOS, is it appropriate for kids to do drag? I think to really explore this topic, first we need some context. I mean, what even is drag? Field trip. So I just rolled up at my friend Dev's house. Dev is a perfect person to talk to about drag because he's a drag queen. Let me in, it's raining! I'm gonna die! What, you, you never know, see rain. I know. don't oh, fare well in the rain. And I'm a witch and I'm gonna melt in it. You and I, we've met in kind of a cute way, actually. <laughs> we met through this kind yeah, of. Yeah, we did. You wrote me a super cute letter online. That was like what? I probably wrote that letter probably like eight years ago. Suddenly, it was a while was ago. a long time ago. You have come a long way, ma'am. What is drag to you? Uh, drag to me is my specific like art form. Uh, drag is the way that I found that I'm good at expressing myself. It's kind of like theater, right? Uh, it can be, yes. Yeah. Uh, drag can be, is, uh, performative, but uh, for me and for a lot of queens, uh, drag is very personal. Uh, people will create these characters or these ideas that come from um, an internal uh, idea of their character. Back in the day when drag first started, it was Shakespearean times. Mm -hmm. uh, women weren't allowed on stage because it was seen as vulgar, and so men had to play female roles in theater. Is drag sexual? can be. <laughs> so can any art form. Songs can be sexual, sculpture, a painting can be sexual. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about how you want to express yourself. It's not innately sexual in nature. At its core, drag is bucking gender. Drag is, is this punk rock like revolution against society's expectations. Should we head over to the Abbey? I think we should. <laughs> We're here at the Abbey. I spend about two hours doing my makeup. I like to take my time to look this crazy. The thing that I love the most about doing my my specific drag is the fact that I get to be like the scene kid that I didn't really get to be when I was little. So I get to be like the scene girl and like I did to be the little punk kid, the little emo girl. And so like my hair gives me life and being around so many other talented people. It's just, it's such a fun environment. So some people see themselves in me and some people are like legitimately terrified of me. And I, I like, I like both of those. I think that children doing drag or any art in general is amazing. Maybe not a nightclub, but I don't think nightclubs are for kids. Uh, I think it would have, Honestly, from my personal experience, I think discovering drag at a younger age, and when I did discover it, I saw so much art and so much color in a life that I thought that I wasn't gonna get any love in. And I thought that my life was, was going to just be darkness, was something that really saved my life. Well, that was 
fun. Let's get back to our tiny drag queens. To some extent, it's hard for me to understand the blind rage around this topic. As far as the House of Man shoot, I mean, yeah, I think it's perfectly reasonable for people to raise an eyebrow and say, mm. you know, it's like if a kid wore a Victoria's Secret t-shirt in their magazine, you know, it's like, oh, well, the kid's not wearing lingerie, right? But they're still in the Victoria's Secret magazine which is a magazine for adults. That said, the outrage about sexualization started way before the onesie drama. It started because he does drag to begin with. The way I see it, kids dress up all the time as their favorite characters, princesses, superheroes. You know, this is the same thing, maybe a little more glitter. What's the big deal? So to discuss this issue, I sat down with one of the more vocal critics of Nemes and his parents on Twitter, Ian Milestrom. So Ian, you started a little bit of a, um, a Twitter war about this. You feel that drag sexualizes kids, yeah? Yeah, I do. In my opinion, it's more than just dress up. A lot of this is coaxed. A sort of forced exploration of sexuality before they're even off an age when they can grasp what sexuality is. In the um, original video that I saw of this kid, he said that he wanted to do it. He'd been, you know, wearing dresses and like dressing up since he was two. To me, that doesn't sound coaxed. That's only if we take what he's saying at face value. I do think drag in general is sexualizing because it's an exploration of male sexuality. It's like, it's asking what does it mean to be a man wearing women's clothing? I think that's why it's such an inherently sexual thing. I mean, it might be about gender, femaleness, maleness, and all of that, but when I hear sexualization, that makes me think of like the erotic, arousal, sexual acts, sexual activity, and Putting on a wig is just not a sexual activity. I don't think he's sexualizing himself, but I do think the adults around him might be sexualizing more. There are gonna be adults who get turned on by it. And I know this is not his fault, right? I mean, it's-, it's Wait, 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 hold on. You think there are adults that are getting turned on by a kid in a wig? Yeah, pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right? Th that's what I'm getting at, right? It it's su such an awful thing to say. Don't you think that's a pretty serious accusation? It, it, it is. It's hard to back up. But so why do uh, you so why do you feel that way? If you can't back it up, where where is this coming know, from? What they see is a a, a larger encroachment of the uh, normalization of uh, the sexualization of children. Uh, in the media, I saw one where they were buying sex toys for children. Uh, a woman was making uh, plastic genitalia for, for children and, and they, as young as five. You know, maybe some people are getting a little over enthusiastic about these yes. things. There are a lot of people who, uh, who are talking about subjects they know little about and they're sort of uh, normalizing child sexuality, saying that it's okay. And is it not okay for Nemes to, to dress up this way, in your opinion? I won't say it's not okay because I don't want to control people's free speech. And you know, Nemes, he does, even though he's a child, he does have his own agency. But I do think that they, everybody involved should be very mindful of what they're doing mm -hmm. because, I mean, being mindful, it doesn't hurt to do, to do that. I think Ian made some fair points here and was actually fairly light-handed compared to some of the stuff that I have read. Most of the criticism there is very one-dimensional. Oh my god, drag is gay. Ah! Like Greg Quinlan, who runs xgaytruth.com, he said this child is already involved in homosexuality and his parents are blessing it. The Western world has surpassed Sodom in its evil. Another ex-gay man, Stephen Black, says, we're witnessing the LGBTQ plus community embrace child abuse by cultivating mental illness by promoting drag in a child. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know this will eventually lead to sexual play. Oh. Being gay is evil, playing dress up leads to mental illness. What? year is it? It's hard for me to sympathize with this point of view. Nobody is embracing child abuse, and that's a pretty serious accusation to lob at someone who lets their kid play around with their makeup. It minimizes the seriousness of what child abuse is and what it does to kids. And as for leading to sexual play, we're talking about a kid who likes to play dress up. 
who's really doing the sexualizing here? As I dug deeper, I read threads claiming that gay men supporting Nemes are secretly pedophiles. This is a homophobic myth that has historically been embraced by people who see being gay as a type of mental illness. In the 1970s, 70% 70 of people believed this about the gay community. Today, these beliefs are much less common, but these attitudes obviously persist despite a mountain of evidence to the contrary. But I don't think that these feelings are about evidence or about facts. I think these beliefs are a reflection of underlying anxieties about sexuality. I do have my own reservations, it's just not really about the drag itself. For one, I don't think that nightclubs are an appropriate place for kids. Another reservation I have is that children's gender exploration and self-expression should never be about other people. It should always be about them. If a kid is suddenly, you know, being swamped with photo shoots and performances and competitions, that raises a red flag for me, which isn't really about drag. It's just about child fame in general. Drag is about breaking the rules. It's subversive, especially for those who grew up at a time when drag was super duper stigmatized and underground. It's pretty powerful to see this kid just out there doing this, expressing himself in the ways that a lot of people haven't been allowed to in the past. It's sort of a hint or a reminder that maybe, just maybe, the world is becoming a little bit more of an open and accepting place. And at the very least, can't we all get down with that? Thanks for joining me, y'all, in the comments below or on Twitter at GoGreen18. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you next time.